Hi. to Crumble Talk. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have our special guest here, Scott Howe. Hey. <laughs> he is a creative pastor on Nations. He wrote a book. Wrote a book, an awesome mm-hmm. book. It's called Just Kingdom like Creativity. It is, Kingdom oh. Creativity. <laughs> yeah, so we're excited to have him here with us. Mm-hmm. Today's topic is God, God the, the Creative. creative. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Love that topic. Yeah. We know you do. That's why you're talking here. about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, as you guys know, we always start off with a game. My favorite game. Yeah, where we All write right. the things. We write the things. Okay. So, today we're going to play Imagine If. Okay? okay? So, Scott has never played this before, so I'm going to explain briefly to him. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you have two slips of paper. The first one says Imagine If, and it then does. the second one says Then. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the first one, you're going to create something that could happen. Imagine if such and such happened. And then you put, like, this is what would happen. So, yeah. That's okay. what we're going to do. Okay? okay? Got it. Yes. <laughs> I explained so well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why I let you explain. <laughs> I get so excited. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> Okay, who's gonna go first? No, you guys go first. Okay, uh, should I go first? Yeah. Imagine if we were naked and unashamed. <laughs> then all our lives will be changed. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Right. That, was, that was actually. <laughs> Got some lyrics. <laughs> it's funny though. Yeah. Let it rhyme. It's good. Right? <laughs> Imagine if the church stopped putting God in a box. Ooh. Then we would all know each other a little better. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, Okay. well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Imagine if we lived in a world where there was theme music that played for each person. Then everyone would be naked (laughs) at work. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that was funny. That was funny. funny. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so the imagine um, game the yeah imagine the imagine game, game. <laughs> so uh today we're going to be talking about god the creative mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Great. so there was a fun fact we always like to start with a fun fact oh, okay. and i didn't get to tell stuffy this before oh, but, yeah um, Ooh, i did see something be because fact. i had to <laughs> i had to be at the bank today and i saw they have like different like random facts and i was like wow that would be a really good one for today When Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, when he signed it, he signed it as Michelangelo, the sculptor, because he never considered himself a painter. Mm. Mm. Imagine that. Interesting. (laughs) Imagine that. (laughs) Yeah. So that's today's fun fact. Yes. Go look it up. (laughs) Yeah. So um, one thing that like you are really good about is like uh, the, you, we're in the middle of the month of the prophetic so we're yes. talking about translating God and all this stuff and mm-hmm. talking about visions and dreams oh, one great. thing that I know that you are, are big on is when we receive a word or when we get a dream or whatever why do we just reduce it to words like why not sure. put it into a picture or a spoken word even mm-hmm. or a dance or, or anything mm-hmm. so yeah, you want to share on that? Yeah, well, it's 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 something that I always thought about, you know, because I, I was always around different types of creatives, right, mm-hmm. doing different things. And I noticed that many pastors at church or, or teachers you see uh, sharing about visions and dreams they had, that they're always telling you what happened. They'll say, oh, I, I had this this. I saw this image in my head or I had a, mm-hmm. a dream where this was moving here and moving there. And, and, but they're, they're reducing it to words. And so I always wondered, well, I have friends that are videographers, filmmakers, illustrators. If God gives you a picture, why not give it to the world as the picture that he gave you? Why reduce it to words? And if you saw a moving picture, if you saw a scene, why not create a scene? If that's how he gave it to you, why not recreate it or proclaim it or, or administrate it back as the way that God gave it to you? It just didn't make sense to me why why we have such an emphasis on words and yet neglect so many of the other forms of communication that God has given us. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so, so true. Good. And like a lot of churches, I feel, miss the whole creative aspect. Yeah. No. 
of yeah. God when most of the Bible is written in poetry and storytelling mm-hmm. and like all these different forms sure. of creativity. Mm-hmm. And because it has been translated over, it doesn't flow the same way anymore um, in English versus the original languages that it was written. But it's so missed, I feel. Like the whole book of Job is poetry mm-hmm. and different mm-hmm. things like that, you know? So I feel like that's so important yeah. to know that God is a creative yeah you know and yeah. like that's the first kind of yeah. you know we know jehovah jireh we know jehovah like he sees us but the first thing that the bible says is god created mm-hmm. right so that's how we first get to know god right yeah mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. you see in the beginning god created and i think most people will say god's a creator yeah but they don't think of the fact that he's a creative mm-hmm. right like you yes. know people friends that are creative you know you can point out their differences from your non-creative friends, right? Mm-hmm. And I think when you understand God as a creative, mm-hmm. as you understand your friends as a creative, you will you you would understand a lot more things about him. If we see that he chooses to uh, speak to his people mm-hmm. through burning bushes and bright lights or a donkey, like those are all in the scripture, right? Mm-hmm. Or he chooses to heal with spitting yeah. in mud or just giving a word. Mm-hmm. or telling a commander to go dip in the water seven times or pools yeah. at the angels. Like mm-hmm. there's all <laughs> kinds of ways that he he operates, yes. right? You've heard me teach all yes. these things before. Mm-hmm. But that's, it, it's so diverse. He He's a creative. He doesn't, he doesn't do things to, sh- like how many times did he heal with mud and spit or how many times right. did he dip in the water or how many yeah. times mm-hmm. did he fight by sending people around mm-hmm. a city seven times and blow up? trumpet yeah. i like that you guys are you, you both have just answered the the first taboo thing for me that was like okay um a lot of times when you would think of church especially not being not being a church goer or knowing or having that relationship with christ it's like oh um okay yeah god rules and that's it you don't think outside of that you know right. so then it's like i don't know i don't know if you want to like say something else to add to that but that answered that yeah Mm -hmm. where it's like he is a creative you know like let's just for sure (laughs) yeah i mean things that i like to point out and this is just always part part of my journey Mm because getting saved not being christian Mm -hmm. you know being an atheist into Mm -hmm. my 20s i had to then i I was loving the impact that god was having on my life Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. you know and i and i i wanted to give everything to him so like here's this Mm -hmm. here's my anger here's my perversion here's all this crap that i do Mm -hmm. but what about my creativity here it is and and he took me on this journey through the scripture and and over a period of time to show me Mm -hmm. how valuable that is and and like this is something i want you to keep your creativity and then through the scripture seeing that uh you know when he when he wanted to heal israelites in the desert Mm -hmm. he had moses make a sculpture of a snake Mm -hmm. you know when he wanted um, Nathan to speak to the king he had Nathan tell him a story mm-hmm. a little allegory a little story mm-hmm. to, to turn the heart of the king you know mm-hmm. which was exactly. amazing and so yeah. when you start to see when Moses couldn't fulfill his calling he said here mm-hmm. I have two artists that I filled with the Holy Spirit yes. Bezalel and Holy mm-hmm. you're going to need these guys to fulfill your calling and then as you look through it Ezekiel the performance uh, prophet mm-hmm. he's a performance artist Mm. I was like, man, God is employing creatives through this whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's all part of it. And so it's 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 who he is, it's how he works, mm-hmm. and he 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 employs creative means and methods to accomplish his will. Yeah. Not yeah. just that straightforward preacher on a Sunday morning behind a wooden mm-hmm. pulpit with a suit and a tie, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's and more than I, that. I love the journey mm-hmm. that you have shared with us before about how you came to Christ because there's all these different people that you would never think, right? What was it? Yeah. I was working at a gas station, so there was a really old, like 90-year-old uh, Jehovah Witness lady that would come in mm. and give me the little watchtower track things. <laughs> there, my girlfriend at the time was a backslidden Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, the Frito-Lay chip guy would come in at 6 in the morning, like, just mm-hmm. walking in the spirit with Jesus, a big old ex-football player. <laughs> my roommate was a DJ at the time uh, as well, and he... <laughs> He rebuked me for not knowing God, even though he was straight heathen, you know. (laughs) So, yeah, there's all these, like, players in this story. If you wrote a story about my salvation, Mm -hmm. it's like, and I think we all have that. We all have these unique Mm -hmm. parts of our life that are just so amazingly strange or unique. Yeah, I think it's, um, uh, we mentioned it briefly, but that kind of explained what I was trying to say earlier about influencer. Mm -hmm. How, 
I think we think influencer is only like the person with a lot of following, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of ca- you know, like cameras and and a lot of people on you. But it's those those people were influencers Absolutely. in a way because sure. you know they they kind of like led up to the point. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same, yeah. Same same thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also <clears throat> like how we are each what we what we like. You're an artist, but you are also God's work of art. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a singer, I'm also God's song, Mm -hmm. you know, so God is still creative in each of us, and he was creative in in saving you, Mm. and like, in your your life journey now, and in mine, and Mm -hmm. in yours as well, you know, so I love how God is still creating, like, in the beginning, God created, but today, God is still creating, so I absolutely love that, and love discovering all the little, Mm -hmm. the little ways that he is. Yeah, Yeah. Me, me and my wife have had this ongoing discussion i don't know how it came up years ago i think we were watching a sunset you know Mm -hmm. and she's like i love the way god makes the sunsets this and that and and i guess i brought up the question like do you think that he i I think that if you knew where everything was gonna go it would kind of be boring Mm -hmm. as an artist and a creator Mm -hmm. i think that you know the happy mistakes that you make along the way Mm -hmm. and i like i think he just puts parameters in place and then lets the clouds go and let however it forms yeah Yeah. (laughs) let it fall where it may you know but there's parameters but he gets to see Mm -hmm. it unfold you know and um my wife disagreed (laughs) she said he knows where every single thing is going you know and yeah anyway Fun little story. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fun topic to discuss. Yeah, you like to think that, well, doesn't God like to see spontaneous creation take place? Mm-hmm. He is still expanding the universe anyway, right. so he, exactly. he does have some mm-hmm. pretty cool things going on still. Yep. Mm-hmm. As long as the main his main mm-hmm. purpose, he can use different pieces to create the same pur- purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Like what Esther, her, uh, her uncle said, Mordecai, he said, hey, if you don't rise up and do it like someone else is going to do it, you know, but you were appointed for this. Right, right. You know? Yeah, I think that's an interesting fact. It maybe doesn't have anything to do with necessarily God the creative. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that <laughs> point <laughs> of... God the trust Because <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. often say, well, if God wants it, it's going to happen. But I think mm-hmm. what Mordecai was saying is, yeah, it'll happen, but you've been invited to personally be a part of this. Yeah. Yeah. So God's will is going to take place. Mm-hmm. But the invitation is, are you going to participate in yeah. this or not? Yeah. Many are called. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's he will find a way. Mm-hmm. But do you want to be a part of that yeah. way yeah. or not? Yeah. You know? yeah. And I, I actually, God reminded me of that yesterday when I was writing a song. Because I wrote this song and I was like, man, I just can't get like the chorus right. I usually start with the chorus and then everything else flows. This time I started with verse one. And so it was so hard to like get the chorus down. And so I made probably like three or four different versions of the chorus. Mm. And Mm. then um, they and they all sounded fine. And so and God was like, you see, like no matter who is in here or what pieces are in here, it's all going to say the same message. It's going to serve the same purpose. And I was mm-hmm. like, you right, you right. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So yes. that's why it, it did tie to the creativity right, aspect right, gotcha. for me, but I, I miss sharing the real <laughs> Could have shared that first so we knew where yeah. you were going. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, one of the things is like, why do we want to translate what God is saying? Yeah, sure. Because mm-hmm. I remember in one of the creative meetings that someone stood up and they were like, I dance, but it's for me. Like, this is how God ministers to me. Sure. So, and and that has its time and, and its place too, sure. because mm-hmm. God does minister to us through all of these things. But like, why do we want to also share it with other people? Right. Yeah. What is the purpose in that? Sure. Instead of just keeping it to yourself. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, I mean, you can't be you can't be a Christian very long or read the Bible very long before you realize, you know, we are we are called to be disciples, mm. disciplined followers of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are ambassadors of a kingdom. Mm-hmm. Right. Second Corinthians five talks about we are now the ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. Mm. So yeah. we are. <clears throat> We are representatives, you know, uh, of a kingdom to a people, right? As as unqualified as we are, you know, we know mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. We know that. So claiming you're unqualified doesn't ex- 
excuse you from yeah. not doing no. it because <laughs> no. he already knew you were unqualified and he mm -hmm. agrees with you when the devil tells you. I always agree with the devil when he tries to accuse me. Who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? You can't do this. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm completely unqualified. can't do it, but God That's thinks so otherwise, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. But if we're ambassadors, if you really own that and say, well, I'm an ambassador for Christ, you know, the scripture says that Christ was an exact representation of the Father, right, in Hebrews, that he was mm -hmm. the, the imprint or the image. And he says, I, I've received, you know, all power, all authority, right? And then he says to the disciples, now you go. I give mm -hmm. you power and authority. Mm -hmm. As I have been sent, now you go. So we understand that when you come into this relationship, not only are you a... Um, a daughter, a son, but you're an ambassador. So mm -hmm. yeah. why is it important? God's making his appeal to the earth through mankind. Um, my former friend and boss, Reinhard Bonnke, he used to tell a story. Um, he used to, he loved to teach the story of Peter uh, when he was on the uh, roof and, um, and he gets the revelation that, you know, these things aren't unclean to go to yeah. the Gentiles. Yeah. And um, the, uh, uh, the angel that um that appears uh t to the man mm -hmm. and says um send for peter that he can come mm -hmm. and then so yeah. the men go get peter but the angel at that moment when he appears um doesn't share the gospel the angel mm -hmm. says go get that man peter and have him come to you and peter came mm -hmm. and shared the gospel and the household was saved right yeah. um and what we see mm -hmm. is that the the, the being an ambassador, being a representative, sharing the gospel here on earth is reserved for man, not mm -hmm. angels, you know. And so why is it important that we would share? It's yeah. it's it's pretty hard not to uh, when you get that revelation that, man, I'm an ambassador. Mm -hmm. So everything I sing, all the poetry I have, wherever I dance, whatever resource I have, every dollar, every moment of my yeah. time, every gift, every talent can be and should be used as a resource to unveil some aspect of who God is. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not just how do we preach the gospel, but how do I reveal his kindness through what I do? Yeah. How do I reveal so who he is that he loves? How do I reveal that he wants to give you beauty for ashes mm -hmm. or that he wants to bind your broken hearted? He's close to the broken hearted. Mm -hmm. Who's going to tell the hurting person that doesn't know about God that he's close to them and wants to bind their broken heart? Mm -hmm. And we should oh, be man. doing that in songs and poetry and dance and movies and film and everything yeah. we yeah. have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not yeah. so yeah. much. What, what are we translating? We're translating we're the, the goodness and the attributes of God to a generation that needs to know yes. how good and great that he is, you know? Amen. Yeah, yeah. that's Amen. so good. And I also, mm -hmm. I was studying, I was reading the, this book called The Physics of Heaven. Mm -hmm. And I learned how we are each created with a unique sound. Like this is scientific. Mm. Wow. Like we each produce a unique sound mm -hmm. because of how we are created, like on the inside and everything. Wow. And I think that's like such a like also the same the message that yeah. we have. We have a unique yeah. perspective of God. He has revealed to himself in a unique way to each of us. Yeah, it's true. And yes. true. so we have a unique way of sharing about him to people that you wouldn't have the same way that I do and I wouldn't have the same way that you do to share yeah. about God with others. So I think that's why it's also so important that we each, because God made us like together in his image. So we together yeah. form his image. Yeah. We each form his image, but then also together we form his image. So I think that community is like so important yeah. because we have that. Like I need your revelation of God. And I need your revelation of right. that, mm, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the whole masterpiece, sure. the whole mosaic that God is doing with yeah. with His people, with His bride. Yeah, I think that's what mm -hmm. He's talking about when they unfold that 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 the eye doesn't say to the ear, "Oh, I'm not an mm -hmm, ear," right? Mm -hmm. That every part of the body de depends. The body, our bodies depend. On the mm -hmm. unlikeness of the parts to function. Yeah. Like I don't need my left arm to copy what my right arm's doing. It needs to be independent. <laughs> yeah. All of the parts yeah. need to play their role uniquely, right? Otherwise, and then what comes to mind is uh, how we prophesy in part too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you unite the whole picture, you can, yeah. see, you can see it all instead of just mm -hmm. like one part only. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the beauty of the body is that nobody gets the full revelation. We have mm -hmm. to come together. Yeah. 
you yes. know, we, we need it. We need all the streams, so all the people, all of it yeah. mm -hmm. to to see a greater picture of who he is. Now, yeah. a little bit on that topic, I'm going to I'm going to hit it a little bit negative only because um, I've been I, I feel like I have. I, so like I was telling you guys, I the first one of my first things I did for G for God, which I didn't know I was doing it for God. I thought I was doing it for my mom, but I did a praise dance, and it mm. was like I had the whole outfit and everything. I borrowed it from another praise dancer in South Florida. This was this right. is like I wasn't even fully saved yet. I wasn't even nothing, nothing. Right. <laughs> like I didn't know nothing, and um, I didn't know, but but I really felt the Holy Spirit mm. for the first time and everything. But giving my life to God and then starting to go to church, I would. I got. I went to a church where the pastor told me that that was not biblical. To dance. So yes. So to dance, and to wow. me, I feel like that attack. Even worship dance. Yeah. yeah. What you did? Yeah. Praise. Wow. I mean, it was a praise and worship. It wasn't rap. It wasn't yeah. like no. It wasn't the. I don't, everything else that you see now in churches. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen many things, but um, I I think my question is how can you um, okay, like well, how do you guys feel about that? But also like. How do you encourage someone to be able to be creative again, in a sense? Because that is something that that I ha I have my dance bag in a closet, so that's just me mm -hmm. admitting. Yeah, and, and a know? lot of people when they come to God, they feel like they have to give up those mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and then to be told by someone in the church that it's not a God thing mm -hmm. when that's how like God reveals Himself. Especially to Through dance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, especially because so. it wasn't like I went to a church and saw a dance, and then I want like I knew mm -hmm. that that was something they did at churches, and I thought I, and I thought it was amazing, but I didn't really ever see myself doing it. So when I had the opportunity, it was like, okay, I'll do this for my mom because she's she's a Christian and she likes this. So let's, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. It was yeah. almost like like wow, how how being creative can save you know lives. And it can, people. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and also some people, the right crowd will, will get the right message from right. it, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. that's the same with anything you do, yeah. anything you say, mm -hmm. because I have done art for God and it's representing things of God. Mm -hmm. I do intercession art and some people thought it was completely opposite and like mm -hmm. okay. put it down, you know. So I think that that is, it's um it's not capable, that can happen but it can happen yeah and other it can happen at areas. any time to mm, anyone okay so that's something that you as i mean you were just coming to christ not, mm -hmm. not even mm -hmm. you know so that's i think we as a church need to kind of protect the arts and and that person didn't have that knowledge of god mm -hmm. you know that's why yeah. speaking on this is so important yeah. because mm -hmm. it's it in that case, it is a taboo, you know, because some people don't have that revelation of God, mm -hmm. that God does appreciate all these different things. I grew up in a church that taught us that dancing was a sin. Mm -hmm. So okay. I never, even though I love to dance and mm -hmm. every time I hear music, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like what is that? You become Middle Eastern? Or something? <laughs> That's in my blood, actually. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Has anyone mm -hmm. ever pointed out to you somewhere in the scripture mm -hmm. where it says that dance is a sin? So that that was the funny part, that it was like very um, just... Oh, okay, um, call for uh, call for a meeting with the pastor so they can explain it. But I immediately ran because I was like, no, 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 right. no. There's no way. So, I mean, in, with, in due time, God did, you know, I moved sure. away from that church. But... It's uh yeah I didn't I didn't want to know. Has anyone ever showed you any? I didn't want to know what they were going to show me. They didn't. I showed them. Oh <laughs> okay I was okay. Like, look, I was like, look, this is where Miriam danced. This is where oh, this person sure. danced. I have heard. Um, oh, wasn't there someone in the Bible? And I oh, man, I should. I wish I would have looked it up or something or sure. thought of it. But I think that she ended up seducing one of the kings by dance. Or something oh, like that. Um, when they asked for uh, John, John the Baptist's Baptist head. head, yeah, that, yeah sure. So I think that that's the only thing I've ever heard where I was like, "Oh, but uh, that's not what I'm doing, though. I'm not trying to right. seduce <laughs> the guys, and I'm not yeah. wearing nothing seductive either." So right. I'm talking about I'm, I'll seduction wear a is a sin, yeah, in any is, form, exactly. Right. So it's like no matter what you do. I mean, like, and I in my outfit, like, because um, at some point I would just buy like big T-shirts and just have right, like the sure. still the the long long skirt that even if you turn, the head, <laughs> you know, like it's like how much un. How much more can you sanctify yeah. this situation? <laughs> well, I think that's the point. I've never read anywhere that dancing is a sin. I, I didn't even, again, I didn't grow up in church, so I, I didn't even understand that concept. You know, that, that, that people say, I don't, I don't really get it. Um, I don't see it, but I do see 
times of people rejoicing and dancing in the scripture mm -hmm. uh, all yeah. the time. In the Psalms, it's recorded lots of times, and you see other places. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that it's it's just like anything else. It's like you can use any creative talent for good or for evil, mm. right? It's the same yes. thing. It's like it's like saying, you know, money is the root of all evil versus the love of mm -hmm. money the is the root of, of all, money, yes. all evil. Mm -hmm. And it's anything that you idolize mm -hmm. or weaponize mm -hmm. for destruction weaponize. is... Mm -hmm is sinful right yes. but mm -hmm. you can use many things for redemptive purposes yes. and so i, I don't yeah. i don't get it. i have yeah. a story about that um we were at ucf and again i wasn't brought up in church mm -hmm. so i didn't really see a lot of church dance stuff mm -hmm. worship dance what what you know i didn't understand it i had only seen break dancers and mm -hmm. poppers lockers that kind of thing and then a ballet and and traditional dancing i had and then i did see a few church dances but i, I kind of feel like <clears throat> the ones i saw maybe they weren't trained dancers they were mm. just kind of like kind of like <laughs> flowy and so anyway so here we were at this outreach at ucf mm -hmm. um we set up outside it's it's the um the college here in our town mm -hmm. and um we were outside the um student center and so we had we had a a, a floor set up for break dancers we have rappers, poets, artists, a little more urban vibe. That was kind of what we did, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and a lot of times the, the, the dancers would get down for five, 10 minutes. You get a crowd, a good crowd, 60, 80, 100 people and stop. And we, and then we'd share a testimony or something. Well, one of the girls with the group we were working with wanted to do a dance. Mm -hmm. She's like, can I do my dance after the, you know, after the break dancers? And I like the format of giving testimony because then mm -hmm. you, you got people, um, cause then people scatter. But anyway, she came and, and, and I said, well, this is good. She's going to grow in it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you can do your dance. What kind of dance is it? Well, it's like like worship dance from mm -hmm. my church. Oh, okay. It wasn't really, didn't fit the urban vibe. I was yeah, kind of like, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> and then, well, what song are you going to do? And she told me it was some like pop Christian song on the radio. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, man, okay. <laughs> and not only that, it was like some like, she doubled it up. Like, mm. so it was like eight minutes or something oh, like that. And, wow, like, oh, no. and so I was just <laughs> everything fans. against it. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, we're going to build this up with break dancers and fast moving stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then she's going to come out and do this and everyone's going <laughs> to slowly walk off. And that's exactly what happened. She went out, she did her dance and everyone kind of scattered except for two or three people. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a girl watching from far off, like mesmerized. Mm. And so one of the girls there, actually my wife, went over and talked to this girl who had stood there and watched the whole dance. Mm -hmm. And she was like, like somehow like in awe, like stuck there. Mm -hmm. And so my wife went to her and said, what, Hey, what's going on? Did you like the dance? And this girl like was shook. And she's like, I can't believe, I can't believe that he came to me like this today, that mm -hmm. God came to me. Wow. And she's like, what's mm -hmm. going on? And so the girl said that she, she grew up in church, mm -hmm. used to dance in her church, but had walked away from a church and came to the college when she moved away from home wow. and when and had kind of left church for a few years mm -hmm. altogether. And when she saw that girl dancing, mm -hmm. she felt like it was God saying, remember how you used to dance for me like wow. that. Wow. And all yeah. those feelings came back mm -hmm. and she flooded her heart and she rededicated her life right there. Mm -hmm. We prayed with her and then. Uh, we asked, where do you go to church? And she's like, oh, I'm on the west side of town. And so we recommended a church for her to go to. Mm -hmm. And my wife gave her an email or a phone number or something. And anyway, three weeks later or so, she gets a text from this girl who says, after I left there, I was so amazed. I went to that church you told me. They were having some retreat weekend thing. Mm -hmm. So I signed up that weekend. It was the following week. I went. I got room roommate with a girl I knew from high school oh, that was a Christian yeah. now. And I went to the weekend retreat and it was amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, wow. I'm, I'm back with God now and this wow. kind of thing. Okay. From that good. one from church from dance. From, right? the <laughs> <laughs> from the <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it just, it humbled me, of mm -hmm. course, of course. To, <laughs> but it also, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I see that man, if, it, if if there was something on that that wasn't holy, mm. wh wh why did that capture this girl's heart, you know? Um, I never exactly. thought that anyway, because I never thought that dance as a, as a, as a whole was, mm -hmm. was sinful in any way. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we have we have lots of testimonies of dance and what dance oh, yeah. has done, and, with, mm -hmm. yeah. and so I don't know. I don't I don't know where that comes from. Yeah, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. why people think that. Uh, some people think that drawing images is is taboo as well because you're making an idol out of something or sculptures oh, yeah. or anything Jesus. like that. 
anything like this. Mm, my Jesus as a man bun. I always share that with people. <laughs> Jesus so, as a man bun? Yes. I feel yeah. like he was very smart and he probably was hot. Come on. Yeah. Think about it. I remember when um, Alejandro Rebel had a Jesus painting that someone else posted and it went viral. And so many people were saying, oh, this is a sin because you're not mm. supposed to draw Jesus and all that yeah. stuff. And it's like, that's why I mm. think like the right crowd will appreciate it and it will get to the right people because there's yeah. so many people who are being so touched and ministered. Mm -hmm. And it's the same when I, when I do fashion. Yeah. You know, that's something that, that you brought up before that um, fashion is one of those things that we don't see as Christian a lot of the times, but you're not going to go around with no clothes on, so you need clothes. So, yes. And you might as well. <laughs> Unless we're all naked and unashamed. <laughs> <laughs> Back to my yep, yep. Back to the game. <laughs> yeah, imagine. And then what was the, the yeah. thing at the end? We'd all be naked at work. And then we'd all be naked at work. Yeah, <laughs> so we need fashion. Because we are ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> and then our lives would change. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so we'd all know each other better. Oh my gosh. No, so I. Yeah, we like fashion, the point. Fashion, <laughs> fashion, <laughs> fashion, and we might as well like bring God into it because mm -hmm. He created fashion. Like when Adam and Eve were naked and ashamed. You know, he clothed them mm. and he redeemed that. Yeah. So we have mm -hmm. to let God redeem all these different forms of art and creativity because yeah. it was his idea in the first place. For all yeah. these and I think where there's no absolute statement of sin in the scripture, mm. we have to we have to walk according to our conscience. I met a guy shortly after I was saved, which was in the 90s. And um, those were big party days, big rave days. Big old fat jeans, like mm -hmm. super wide jeans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jenko. Yeah, the Jenko <laughs> jeans. And he felt like that was part of his identity. So when he got saved, he bought like super tight jeans only. <laughs> and, wow. and the Lord made him throw away all his like oh, wide wow. pants wow. and just wear tight because mm -hmm. it, it was so part of his culture and his mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But are wide pants a sin? No. no. But... <laughs> But for him, as part of Our his, as part of his sanctification and his walk with the Lord, that was what he had to do, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that there's a lot more we need to negotiate independently, individually in the gray area mm. area than there is black and white, yeah. right? And and I think we we if we look for is this right or wrong, right or wrong, you may be missing the fact that the Lord says it's right or wrong for you or he wants yeah. to do something through this so we have to be yeah uh, we have to be connected to him and we have yeah. to walk that out in a way mm -hmm. that we walk before him true you know true to our convictions yeah you know? we we always mm -hmm. look for a formula i feel like yeah and always. instead of a relationship with god sure. where he's speaking to us and telling us hey do this and that because right. like you you always said about the whole like going around the place like seven times or whatever yeah walk around like, jericho or making yeah. a sculpture or whatever yeah. there's no pattern nobody ever did it again mm -hmm. exactly right? it only happened wow. one time yeah like god was creative yeah, he wasn't bushes. trying to give yes. you a pattern of burning bushes. Like, okay, now all the bushes <laughs> all are the bushes. stuck. Yeah. No, there's only one burning bush that oh, we know I'm of. I'm only talking when there's a burning bush. <laughs> yeah. For bush real. wasn't burning, clearly not God. But <laughs> when you when you talk about fashion, we look at um when we look at Exodus, when we look at at Bezalel, Aholiab, and whoever else they brought, mm -hmm. it talks about them mm -hmm. um spinning priest garments with fine purple linens and stuff mm -hmm. and we colors. know yes. yeah. we know that um uh, solomon part of the the wisdom of god that was mm -hmm. that was that was before people's eyes especially the queen she said when when she, when she saw the food at his table and the robes of his servants she was breathless you know mm -hmm. yeah. and i think mm -hmm. it mentions like I, I wonder what kind of robes he had made for them you know that would that would exude the wisdom of God or the beauty of God. You know, it's it's amazing. And so it's there's stuff in there in the scripture. It's it's in there. It's not it's not these big, you know, superhero Bible stories that you're gonna teach kids and mm -hmm. you know from kindergarten. But it's it's yeah. in there for us who care about these things yeah. mm -hmm. for us, I I think, you know, yeah. that, that God is concerned, is using these things and there's some importance and some value to these things. Yeah. If if done right, if done mm -hmm. correctly, you know, and there's exactly. still relevance of it today. Like I was mm -hmm. just looking at the flowers in my backyard today, and I remembered that scripture says He will clothe us. Like even mm. the flowers are just even better Great than what Solomon yeah. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So I was like, wow, look at how God still speaks even through like these little tiny things and these yeah. little reminders, you know. Sure. And I think that that's a that's a great example if we talk about uh, we were talking about being uh, translating God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a as a visual artist, I've done yeah. this with many different things. If I decided, if I looked at that scripture and said, it says something like, even the lilies are arrayed with greater splendor than Solomon was. Mm-hmm. So if I decided to do a whole series of paintings or drawings of just lilies, right? To me, that would be me putting forth this revelation that God was wanting to clothe us with mm-hmm. his glory. Mm-hmm. And I think that I could put many of those in galleries. I could put them anywhere, all over the place. Yeah. And even if it doesn't have a scripture on it, I feel like I am placing in public eye this revelation. And there's always going to be X amount of people who ask, why lilies? Why do you paint the lilies? What's up with all mm-hmm. the lilies? Yeah. You know, <laughs> And that's where like Ezekiel, mm-hmm. when he released the word of the Lord, you get to say, well, it comes from this. Boom. It mm-hmm. comes from this scripture that says yeah. even the lilies were more arrayed with splendor than Solomon. I've never been too too strong at like evangelism. Like it's always been a little hard for me to bring it up sure. to people. But whenever I have like a painting or a, or even the key. Yeah. Like a lot of people, um, and you guys can explain that um, a little more. But when they come in my car, they're like, what is this? And then now I'm like, oh, sure. yeah, I can talk about Jesus. So these, these people that are so That's cool, it. That is it. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's this church. You need to go. You know, So it opens that door. Sure. I, I don't know exactly. if you guys want to explain the key a little more because I don't I don't know the full details. Right. It's, it's, it's for missions, right? It's, yeah. It, it came has, about it on a mission. Story, yeah. And Scott mm-hmm. can explain it. One thing I really appreciate when I started coming to the creativity was, like, you don't have to paint Jesus to be talking about Jesus. Sure. Mm-hmm. You don't have to paint, like, be so literal, literal, <laughs> literal. You literal. You don't have to be so literal in in showing and translating God. For and, sure. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you you have something, a story about like, oh, Daniel and the lions, and you don't have to draw Daniel and the lions, and you can <laughs> right, draw right. like you know something that. <laughs> sure. And that's the mm-hmm. whole creative aspect to it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So what was I don't know the revelation of the keys. The key. Yes, you do. <laughs> the key. Well, the, the whole, it came about on missions and this, and, and what we refined it down to is that every key is, so we take the regular keys and we paint them bright colors just because we like to paint stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we don't have to, it stands anyway, but people love it when it's painted, mm-hmm. right? And the key basically is a metaphor for, mm-hmm. for humanity. Every key is different. Mm-hmm. Every key is create, every key is created unique and every key is created mm-hmm. to unlock something on the earth. Yes. Right. Every That's person so is created different, created unique, mm-hmm. created to unlock something on the earth. Right. Yeah. And so the fact is that, you know, my car keys doesn't open your house, no. you know, that type of stuff. Your car <laughs> yeah. key doesn't open the P.O. box, you know. Yeah. And each of us is created specifically on purpose, mm-hmm. in, uniquely, individualistically for a purpose. And many people feel that that purpose. So we, we get into when people say, hey, what is this? What is this mm-hmm. about? And you can get into that. It's like, well, do you know? And and people are looking for purpose. Yeah. I mean, college students are changing their major, like, oh, their yeah. underwear just every day. Like, don't <laughs> know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Maybe more than their well, underwear. Their Hopefully they don't change their major so much. But people, I think <laughs> people there. feel like there's something yeah, yeah. for them that yeah. I, 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 I've got to grab a hold of. You mm-hmm. should have that feeling. Mm-hmm. And it, it really resonates yeah. with people. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, that's the point. I mean, that's, that's what Ezekiel did. We always talk about that. Mm-hmm. He walked around shaving his hair or quaking or doing crazy things and they said what does this mean and then he had the revelation ready to share behind what it means so in some ways becoming a sign and a wonder in what you do is part of translating god well what is this what does this mean what should we do right tongues of fire brothers what should we do what does this mean when the tongues of fire fell you know yeah. and i think becoming the prophets became the sign and the wonder you know the, mm-hmm. in, in the very in their very being mm-hmm. and i think yeah. as artists we have that opportunity to become that yeah. right i think that's what many fashion shows are about you're not going to wear 90 percent of the stuff no. right <laughs> no. but it's it's they're it's old, in, they're, they're, <laughs> they're embodying this yeah this this feeling this vibe of yeah. fashion yeah mm-hmm. you know on, on what so it's about and you resonate looking at them walking down with giant things on their head or things that are just yeah. not going to see yeah. at macy's this the, summer yeah 
And yeah. I think what you were saying about like how we each have this, you know, revelation of God is how it's so important to have that relationship so that you can have that and not try to like translate what someone else is saying and be unique in that, mm. you know, mm. um, because like that's how we are relevant. Yeah. You know, that's Ooh. how we stay on the forefront of yes. culture and not try to sure. be influenced by it, mm-hmm. but be on the forefront of it. Right. That's something that you're you speak a lot. About, yeah, sure. You know? Yeah, I think so. I think that I think that I mean, somebody said before the Holy Spirit is the most relevant the relevant thing on the planet, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel like what's relevant to humanity always is their identity, significance, purpose, joy, mm-hmm. um, relationships. Like all these things mm-hmm. are, it's always relevant no matter what, where you're at. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, mm-hmm. we need to really keep our eye focused on like, what is, what does it mean to be relevant and, and, and how do we join those conversations that people are having, mm-hmm. right? Because people are asking questions. It's been yeah. said before that mm-hmm. the church is trying to answer questions that nobody's asking, right? Most people are walking <laughs> around wondering, you know, about eternity, but they're wondering how they can pay their bills or have better right. relationships yes. or how come my relationships fail mm-hmm. or why am I still single, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> can, okay. can I say that here? <laughs> You want to talk on that? Uh, no, but but the, the, <laughs> those those are conversations, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that when we can enter into those conversations mm. that people are having now, if it's if it's if it's race war stuff that, that's going on, if it's hyped up media stuff, if it's um, immigration tension, mm, if yeah. it's whatever it may be, if it's gender identity, mm-hmm. um, how do we enter into those conversations yeah. that are, are relevant to society in a redemptive way that actually speaks to the eternal relevance that people feel, yeah. right? And, and I think that you can always, uh, you can always find a way through what you're doing to join a conversation. And the reason we need to is because Again, back to being an ambassador. People need to hear God's view on it. They, mm-hmm. they need clarity on what this really means and looks like and how it really resonates with the human soul. I think that's mm-hmm. why when you preach a gospel, and we've all heard it and seen it in churches, this is a clear gospel. You'll hear testimonies later, and, and probably many of your friends have it, that when I got saved, I don't know, I got up and went to the front, and I don't really even know why I was going. I just mm-hmm. felt like yeah. something just drew me to the altar, yeah. and I just mm-hmm. gave my life. Because yeah. it, it, it resonates with the human soul to mm. have a savior who accepts you and loves you and, and understands who you are and you were made to be um, in communion with him and you were made for something great and you were made yeah. to, to, to walk the earth in, in, in harmony with, uh, with, with life and experience mm-hmm. joy and abundant life. Like we all feel that there's a, there's a search for mm-hmm. utopia. Like we all yeah. want that somewhere, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Happy every yeah, every every <laughs> mm-hmm. generation fails to <laughs> uphold that utopia. You know? Yeah. 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 It's so true. It's no. true. Oh, so. <laughs> that was a lot. That was good. That was, that was a lot. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it was good. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, like, where's my notebook? <laughs> like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta write this. <laughs> no, well, I think so. You also mentioned like. Like, you know, influencing culture, being on the forefront yeah, of culture. Say that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think yeah. that I, I may have an unpopular viewpoint on that. Ooh, mm. to tell. <laughs> it may be taboo. Yeah. Maybe. Well, think think about this. When you're in a a wicked, deprived generation mm. in darkness who loves sin and runs away from the light, sin sells. Sin is the greatest commodity we have. Yeah. So when sin is popular and you present something unpopular, it's not going to get the influence and attention mm. that you think it ought to. So I think... And it might even be reprimanded. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be pushed back against. Algorithms. Do, do, <laughs> we, <laughs> do we need that voice? We absolutely do. We need mm. the... The voice of one calling in the desert, preparing the way for the Lord. This is a John the Baptist generation. We're preparing mm-hmm. the way for the Lord. And so we need mm-hmm. to be that voice. But will we have 
top Hollywood films, not if it's not if it's countercultural, but there is ways to join conversations that bring redemption to it. Yeah. I think yeah. that can have influence, right? Mm-hmm. And so we tread this line, right? And people get persecuted for being like being a sellout, or mm-hmm. these Christians made this movie, and and there's no gospel in it and stuff. And <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, but I always feel like. If you're fighting a fight as a boxer, you just don't have a right hook. And I think Christianity mm-hmm. is always the right hook. It's the it's the rapture. It's the end times. They're trying to throw the knockout punch, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But if you know anything about boxing, there's 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 a little bit of dancing going on. Mm-hmm. There's a little setup. There's yep. little jabs. Mm-hmm. There's there's all kinds of things. You don't just come out. If you just did the right hook all the time, you would never win a fight. That's and I true. think that there's place for all of it, right? There's mm-hmm. some some sow seeds, some water. God gives yeah. the increase. And I think we, we need it all. I think that if your goal and you feel called to be influential in, in films or art or something, you're going to have mm-hmm. to do it in a way that brings some life and wisdom, but is, um, is relevant to the conversation that's happening, mm-hmm. right? And answer yes. some questions along the way that people are asking that fits the... Have you ever yeah. had, or maybe you guys are, like I am, the weird one who steps up to people in a circle having a conversation, <laughs> you know, that, yeah. and you don't know yeah, what to say, and people that. are, yeah, yeah. I do that. Brian Reagan has some great skits on that. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you see his, see <laughs> his oh, new God. special, Red, on the, on the Red Rocks or something, yeah. he talks about walking from circle to circle, <laughs> trying to fit in. When it gets really quiet, and then you got to like slowly move away, because <laughs> you know it's your fault. I got quiet. Because like, oh. you said something. All of a sudden, it became Stupid. an A-B conversation. Yes. Trying to see you <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's good. That happens to me all the time. Right? <laughs> but I think that, that we, can, we can think of it that way, is that we're joining a cultural conversation. Mm. But yeah. you're just coming out with nonsense. And so I'm for yes. the, it's not, it's not being ashamed of the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's addressing certain things. If part of the agenda of Jesus is to, obviously the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel. That's mm-hmm. us, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. to bind up broken hearts, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Putting an arm yeah. around someone and sitting with them when they're hurting and just being with them. Yeah. yeah. We've all yeah. had to go and be with friends mm-hmm. and we didn't preach the gospel to them. You sat with them, you cried mm-hmm. with them, you cooked them yeah. dinner, you hung out, made sure exactly. they weren't alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that's nice. that's 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 part of this kingdom work, you know. Mm. Um Jesus rebuked those who didn't give to the poor, or didn't visit him in jail. And yeah. they said, "When did we see you?" Mm-hmm. And so this is there's so much more to this. It's so much broader. Yeah. Right? And I feel like if you're going to be in Hollywood, if you're going to be an influential singer, or you feel called in some way, you're going to walk mm-hmm. a different line than someone who has a different calling, mm-hmm. you know? So for, yeah. To some, it may look like standing on a street corner, being a sign and a wonder, like Ezekiel. To mm-hmm. others, it may be, I don't know how Daniel got to be in the place of, of where he was, yeah. but he must have walked he must have balanced along that line somewhere along the way, mm-hmm. you know, to get an influential position. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'm definitely not for compromise in any way, but I, I don't think that we need to be uh, running around yelling like a, like a, you know, a crazy person at the top of our lungs all the time. We, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, we're running a race. It's mm-hmm. a marathon race. And I think that as the Lord gives us wisdom on the things we do, there's place for all of it. There's place for the right hook, but there's place for the jabs and the setup and just getting in those places. There are great Hollywood influencers that never make movies, but they're Mm -hmm. a part of the Hollywood culture and they're meeting with people and Mm -hmm. they're, and they're having a major encounters with wonderful actors and actresses in the culture, but they're not, Mm -hmm. they're not changing it through the face of films. They're changing it within as well. And so there's so many roles and ways to go about it. And so, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's. That's address the question or not yeah, that yeah. Is good. Yeah. Um, I think for people who don't consider themselves creative mm-hmm. one like good first step is to start recognizing how God is creative in showing up in your life like mm, that sure. girl that was in the, the school that she said I can't believe that he showed up in this yeah. way she recognized God in the midst of that even though it wasn't like a a heavenly like sign with angels yeah. and stuff she recognized that was god that's true mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. like um you know you you said you said something that like brought um brought a memory to me that 
um, like I was reading a devotional and it encouraged you to ask God, where are you? And that's not something I typically mm. like to ask, but I'm yeah. like, okay, mm-hmm. God, where are you? <laughs> you <know? laughs> and so he was, he yeah. told me, he was like, I'm, I'm in your friends that are spending time with you and hugging you and spend, you oh. know, all this stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So I, so like, Things like that, like you were saying about like spending time with people, yeah. just being with them. And sure. people mm-hmm. a lot of times are like, well, where is God? And it's yeah. like, well, God is there with you yeah. during this. And that's a form mm-hmm. of him being creative For in sure. your life. Yeah. You know, so that's a good first step in just starting to recognize God as the creative. And then yeah. if you are creative, then you can start saying asking God, how do you want me to use this? What is it that you're saying, first of all, right? Or sometimes it just comes at you without yeah, you even sure. asking, like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I just got this. Or I've gotten, like, songs that God gave me in the middle of a dream. And so I have to, like, write it as soon as I wake up or I'll forget. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Stuff like that. That's awesome. So he gives, like, different revelations mm-hmm. to us. And then that's how we can yeah. That's how we can start, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think creativity is different than artistry. Right? We're talking about God the creator, not God the artist, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so creativity looks very different um i, I kind of t- teach it this way i heard someone say years ago that that love will make you creative mm-hmm. and so i've, I've taught it that oh. way before okay. that and thinking of it from from my own perspective and many guys perspective mm-hmm. when a guy has his first love mm-hmm. you 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 just you know you get all silly <laughs> right and you want to show the girl that that you love her mm-hmm. as many ways possible right yeah. if you you, I mean, for us, all we know, in my age when I was young, all we know is that whether it's from movies or not, we should get chocolates. Okay. We should get balloons. Yes. We should send flowers <laughs> to her work. Like, we should have something ready for her at her house when she comes home. Like, these type of things. We should maybe try to write a poem. Like, because I don't know, those were all things in my day that yeah, yeah. you were supposed to do. And it's not enough. You just keep inventing other ways to show your love Mm -hmm. for that girl that's not enough that i did flowers or did this it's like (laughs) you want to do more you want to open every door you want to take her you want anything she says she wishes she had you want to buy it's like you just become infatuated on trying to show your love Mm -hmm. to her right and love makes you creative it causes you to invent ways and i think that as a believer when we really have god's love working in us when we're Mm -hmm. really captivated by his love and then he gives us a love for our generation, then you invent ways to share his love with them. Mm -hmm. Like how else can we do something to share Mm -hmm. the love of God with this generation? Mm -hmm. And you come up with ideas, not artistic, but just how do we, how do, how do we do this? You know, whatever it may be. And people have done all kinds of things from handing out donuts and coffee and water and (laughs) and whatever it is. I mean, Mm -hmm. Skywriter. We have a Skywriter in town. You've seen him? It's called Mm -hmm. Holy Smokes. The the plane. that He's always drawing Jesus Mm -hmm. in the sky with his plane. Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) people use whatever you have. And I think that it's love that makes us creative because it constantly pushes you to invent new ways to share who he is with those who don't know. Yeah. I'm so, so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because um, I think I, I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna say this with a little bit of authority, only because I didn't think I was creative until I met you guys, mm. and um, it's it's such a lie. I think that yeah. that would be a, a big lie because as I'm hearing, even throughout throughout the podcast, like, to this episode, as I hear you talking, I've modeled in fashion shows. Yeah, I've I was in pottery in high school. Um, and then it's just so many you like danced I danced for your mom. right for my mom, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like wow, like um, how how sometimes we think we're not creative or like just it's a lie. It's like sure. you know it's a lie of the enemy. No, we are all creative, and even if it's just with your notebook and a pencil, like, sure. Because mm-hmm. I do find yeah. myself writing some of my dreams, and when I can't write what was in the dream, I'll like draw a little something that will remind me of what it was. So yeah. mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I am creative, man. Like. Right. I take ownership. <laughs> that. That's us yeah. imitating God. We are all we all have that creativity in our DNA because mm. we're His sons and daughters. Yes. You know? yes. So a lot mm. of people like they're like, "Oh, I'm I'm all office and I'm administrative." And I'm like, "Well, you're creative in coming up with those solutions." You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. absolutely. All, Solving yeah. problems is part of exactly. part of creativity. Yeah, in a huge yeah. way. Mm-hmm. And when you know mm-hmm. God is like that, you're more likely to hear and think of unconventional things that's why it's mm-hmm. important to know him as a creative because yeah, yeah. when you think of something off the wall you just don't think well that's stupid and throw it away it no, could be no. him it yeah. could be him talking yeah. when when mm-hmm. when i've shared before about 
Jacob and Laban, where he goes to get his wife and he gets tricked and he ends up with two wives. And then, oh, he, en- and then he ends yeah. up having to work the debt off, you know, yeah. for mm-hmm. Laban. Mm-hmm. And he's just he's just getting done wrong every, yeah. every turn. Yeah. <laughs> and then he makes a deal with Laban. Okay, he's watching a sheep. He said, well, can I take the the least expensive sheep, all the ones with spots and speckles, because mm-hmm. the, the unspotted lambs were more valuable. Yeah. He's like, yeah, sure, you can keep all the spotted speckles. And what he does is he brings them down to a watering hole, and he he um, he has them breed or mate in front of this, like, spotted speckled bark on the trees. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. scientific or not, but <laughs> the babies come out spotted and speckled. But uh, for him to, to need finances, because then he grew rich enough mm-hmm. to take his family away. And I think mm-hmm. how many of us are praying for finances? Oh. And and here he comes with this idea to, to breed spotted and speckled sheep. That's, that's mm-hmm. creativity at its finest. It's not artistry, but mm-hmm. it's God's answer to how mm-hmm. he's going to provide. Or he could deliver your food by the birds. Like Elisha did, right? Wow. The birds came, yeah. which wasn't fun. I wouldn't want to be waiting, sitting around my yeah. house with no food waiting for the birds. But <laughs> that's still another way of provision. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. when you understand God is into these yeah. creative methods and means, it allows you to, to open up your understanding, yeah. to pray different, mm-hmm. to think different, to feel like, well, what if God wants to move me into this thing what if what why am i feeling drawn to do this or that mm-hmm. and it seems out of the ordinary yeah. that that may just be exactly what god wants you to do mm-hmm. god's not traditional yeah. is he and i think christianity's traditional mm-hmm. and maybe that's where mm-hmm. the rub is religion, yeah. religion. Yeah. for sure yeah yeah. When it's all structure and no relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, to, to add what you were saying too, like um I think us accepting that love oh, wait, hold on. What you said um, Love makes creative. Love wait. Love yeah, makes love us makes creative. makes us creative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like then you start seeing God in different ways. Because for me it's like every time I see a bird and I'll see like random color birds that when I tell my friends they're like in Florida? What? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I always, every time I see a bird, like a different color, I'm like, oh, that's God. So he loves me. It's for me. Yes. That's great. Yeah. His fave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, in Romans, mm-hmm. it's not a, it's not something we quote often around here just because as evangelists, you like the, the raw, raw go get them. <laughs> but in Romans, it says that, um, the stars pour forth their speech. And creation mm-hmm. itself is enough evidence that men are without excuse. So mm-hmm. he's saying that tree out there is enough evidence mm. that God is here and exists and you wow. don't have an excuse. Mm. You should be able to look okay. at the stars of the trees or creation itself mm-hmm. and say there is a God. Yeah. That's how sensitive our hearts should be or that's how calloused mm. men's hearts have become. Mm. And so he's saying wow. that there's enough evidence around you um, that you should experience and understand that yeah. there's there's God. So mm-hmm. even you yourself are a miracle. Absolutely. You know, we spoke with Dr. Ben last week, and mm-hmm. it's great. like the amazingness of just how God designed the human body. Oh, yes. yeah, and is is like mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Like, when we had our yeah, first baby, it's incredible because we start to read and watch the videos on how the how the body prepares the moment that it's pregnant. Mm-hmm. The whole mm-hmm. main, the everything in the in the female body begins to change. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Even physically it makes space for mm-hmm. it and stuff mm-hmm. like it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so it's I don't know how you so can cool. can look at that stuff yeah. and and really not give glory to God. It's very hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's our role, right? That's our, yeah. that's our goal yeah. is to emphasize yeah. The things that people can't see, right? Yeah. I feel like a photographer's job, a photographer only captures stuff that's already there mm-hmm. for years. Yeah. Now we have some technology and some AI stuff now. It's a little different. But basically, <laughs> oh, a photographer yeah. is taking a moment and causing you to look at that moment more clearly and specifically. Mm-hmm. But all they're doing is emphasizing something that's already there. And I feel like part of what we do as creators or every one of us as an ambassador, yes. we're just emphasizing the qualities of God that are all around us, the things of God that are there, either through a redemptive lens or just through beauty or truth or whatever it may be. Um, we're just we're saying, look at this or touch yeah. this or mm-hmm. feel this or mm-hmm. understand this, yeah. you know, and trying to capture that and and let people look deeply on it so that mm. they can. Mm-hmm. experience him where they've grown hard and calloused where 
you know, where the star doesn't convict someone or a tree doesn't convict someone. Yeah. We need to emphasize it, you know? That's so good. Yeah. I have I have one final question about sure. because this is so important when it comes to artistry and creativity and all this because when you're trying to make yourself known and when you're mm. trying to make yourself famous, make a name for yourself, like that was the fall of Satan. That's why it happened, you yeah. know? Yeah. So can you mm. speak a little bit on that? I know there's there's a lot to be said about like how because how you have to protect yourself, yeah. right? When you're when you're coming up with all this amazing stuff. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also then there's the reaction of people, Oh my god, you're so awesome, you're so good. Yeah. But, but like it's like but God God, yeah, mm. yeah. I, I think it's a. I think it happens a lot. Of course, when you talk about creatives, if you're a musician or artist or something, you're you're trying to make a name for yourself because you are your brand, you know. Mm. But that's mm-hmm. transitioned from just artists to every single person with an Instagram account. Yes, <laughs> even if they don't have anything, they're still branding themselves for yeah, no reason. Yeah. Just yeah. look at me and my oh, food man. and who I am. Like I'm awesome. Like how, how just, you smell bread. Yeah, they're just <laughs> they're just branding their life now. Okay, like, and for some reason, like I think, oh, please, people, like, well, we po- we post what we want you to see, you know. So it's true, you kind of are branding yourself, but people think I travel a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I'm a single mom in Orlando. Like, what are you I'm talking about? <laughs> I only uh, you're right, but I do only post when I go like to the beach or to when I, yeah. So right, you're, yeah. you're well, right. It's, that's so that's, interesting. That's perception. That's how perception works, mm. and that's how yeah. we brand ourselves is the the highlights. Or if somebody mm-hmm. only sees if you only travel three times a year or twice a year, and it's mostly local, but yeah. you only put that up. Yeah. If you only that's put true. pictures of your food, they'd say, "Hey, you eat a lot." Wow, you eat a lot. <laughs> yeah. Whatever yeah. it is, right? I do eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think overall, I, I think it applies for all of us. But mm-hmm. as, far, as far as creatives, I, it's it's hard. It's hard to um, not get, not believe that height. Especially if you are good at something. If you're a great musician or good singer or artist or poet or whatever it is. Part of it is you want to market yourself so that you can, if it's a career choice or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. But... I do think that we have to we have to be very careful that I mean that we don't build ourselves as an idol, you know. Mm. Um, the thing that we we you know for artists, I I the, the you know the first time I saw uh, something that I could relate to, I guess, and, and teach other mm-hmm. creatives is when when the Israelites left Egypt, they took all this gold, you know, and um, but then what we see happening with them is is taking. The riches and the blessings of God and melting it down and making a calf out of it. Mm. The, oh. the very, which yeah. that may have been for the temple or that may have been for something else. Why did he give them all that gold? But they mm. took that favor and that blessing and turned it into an idol that they worshipped. Oh. And I think many times that happens. You can take, yeah. I mean, how many musicians are out there yeah. that are super huge that grew up in a church, you know, mm-hmm. and just decided that it was for them instead of for him, you know? And so mm-hmm. I think that that's something we can't get trapped in um, or that we shouldn't get trapped in. Many do is that mm-hmm. the bigger the stage, the bigger I am, the bigger influence I can have. And I feel like, yeah. you know, the, the, the scripture is clear that God sets kings in place and he, he tears thrones down and he builds thrones up. And so I think that if we're open and we're prepared, we let him dictate the stage you know he can give you a stage at any moment but the point is are you gonna have the word of god on your lips and a prepared heart to share when he gives you that stage mm-hmm. or is it just going to be another stage for you to get more yeah. known and perpetuate you know wow. you 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 yeah. with a little bit of thank god at the grammys type stuff you know what i mean so <laughs> it really <laughs> is a uh, it really is a oh, trap man. i think mm-hmm. because we think that the more the more I'm known, the more I can make him known. And um, the scripture is clear that if you lift up him, he will draw all men. And so it's a, I think it's a slippery slope for us, mm-hmm. um, those wanting to be influencers. I think yeah. that we leave the stages, you know, to the Lord. And I think every stage is valid. Like I, I talk about that all the time. You have some, some singers that their whole goal is to uh, make it to pop status. You know, and even if they they want to have influence for the kingdom, um, 
you can lose a lot of opportunities along the way if that's your focus is just to, to get pop status. And then there's some that'll never be there, you know? I hate to be the Simon Cowell of the music <laughs> Christian music world, but there's some that will never get there. But you know who loves music? Everybody. Like Mm. Go, Everybody go to a park in your city and sit yeah. and play, and you'll yeah. have great conversations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Share, pray with some people. Mm-hmm. Sit outside yeah. a cafe. Go to open mics. Go to the hospital and sing over sick mm-hmm. families and kids. Yeah. There's a thousand things we can do mm-hmm. as musicians, more than just influencing it from the pop charts and getting a place. Yeah. Um, all along the way, there's all these spaces. Um, yeah. you know, someone used to say, "There's a pulpit on every street corner." Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that's so good okay. i love that mm-hmm. and i always see that as like a quick way to know that something is gonna fail if the right heart is not behind it mm-hmm. because like i i help a lot of authors and if they say oh this is how i'm gonna make my income i'm like oh right. like is that why you wrote the book sure. because that's not gonna <laughs> <laughs> that's not how you're gonna wait and yeah. like i know someone else that started a fashion line to have income and it's like if if that's the passion that's driving this that's not going to sure that's not sustainable mm-hmm. yeah because that's not something that like money is such a fluctuating yeah. thing that it that's not it's steady true. ground that even in circular or secular circles they always discuss solving a problem or or meeting a need in your job whatever it is and mm-hmm. then you'll have success you know so even in those circles they know that just income is not enough it has to exactly. has to solve a problem or meet a need we, yeah, well, I mean, uh, Reinhard Bonnke wrote a book called Evangelism by Fire, which I think we've given over 30 million copies of those away. Wow. Probably didn't make a dollar, even though we sold tens of thousands, mm-hmm. cost more to print, oh, like in yeah. 10 different languages, giving away. Yeah. His goal was to get that information in everybody's exactly. hands at all costs. Exactly. And I at think that costs. when you have a passion like that, mm-hmm. at all costs, I don't care if it makes me money or I have to spend money, I mm-hmm. believe in this message and what yeah. this is so much that I want to bring it to humanity. Yeah. You know? And that's sustainable because mm-hmm. what is driving that passion is God and what you know that you have from God and not something that's material. Right. You know, yeah. that's, that's here one day and gone the Yeah. Next. And sometimes we don't even yeah. ask the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I got this idea for a book. Well, mm-hmm. why did the Lord give you that? What is it for? Mm-hmm. We assume that this book is just going to become popular and make me money yeah. rather than there's a message he wants to put in the hands. If it's yeah. a book for teenagers, why not find all of, partner with schools to give all these books away or partner with wherever teenagers are to try to get that or single moms or, mm-hmm. or women or, mm-hmm. you know, low income. You want to teach them finances. Yeah. Why does it have to be a book that hits the New York Times bestseller? Mm-hmm. Why can't it? Mm-hmm. Why can't he miraculously give you favor with a publisher to print ten thousand mm-hmm. with someone to distribute them in all the prisons? Yeah. I have friends that have wrote books that have distributed tens of thousands in prisons. They don't make a That's dollar awesome. off yeah. of it, yeah. but they know when they got the message that it was for prisoners for hope. And so I think yeah. you have to know why did God give me this song or this talent? Because you can't just assume it was for a good career and to make lots of money. Yeah. That's an assumption on your on our part. What yeah. do I do with it? The same way the pastor assumes that the picture or the, the film he can turn into a word, just to bring it all full circle, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. should ask the question, how should I deliver this? Like, what is the purpose of this there thing? There we go. Yeah. And if you can find out God's purpose behind it, then you can more accurately mm-hmm. um, implement it into society. Yes. You know? yeah. yeah. I was, I, I'm was. i glad you said that at the end because um, that's what I was thinking as this, this, you guys were talking. It was like, okay, but a lot of people that you see that have gone down a dark path with their gift or something, it mm. usually either pride came in mm. or these things. And it's more of like, how do you how do you even catch that before it happens? Or even as it's happening, like, you know, I, I think it's hard because especially when people are already liking you, you're hearing the comments. Yeah. You, feel, you feel, oh, it is it is me. Oh, right, it's, right, not, it's, true. <laughs> it's not you. It's not. It's God. You know? That's where community mm-hmm. comes in place, community. right? Ooh, Being around people yeah, that you the know, right people. hear mm-hmm. God and will talk to you openly and honestly. Yeah. You know, we yeah. need that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. That's so true. Good. Yeah. And I like what you have said too. Like when, when people feel, oh, like God is wanting me to influence girls. So I'm going to go into this career and study this in college. And, and you're like, well, why don't you just volunteer in this one place? And, mm-hmm. and 
like start doing that now yeah, instead yeah. of like getting a degree yeah. and like all this yeah, other yeah. stuff right right and that's so, a discouraged degree it's not that that's for that. sure but not. you know yes. yeah like it's true you can still get your degree and volunteer why not well you <laughs> you, you need real life data right mm-hmm. most yeah, things yeah, there's yeah. a there's a pilot program yeah and you like you try it and if you have <laughs> real life results then you go into mm. mass before oh, you true. before you do a four year degree find out if you even like <laughs> nursing that you're going <laughs> right. for go volunteer exactly. as a nurse exactly. and help people before you sink money oh into a four year yes. five year six year <laughs> nursing degree <laughs> whatever it may be yes. yeah yeah and yeah. then yeah. that will really test it because um one of the things that I've heard is like if it before like preaching or singing to crowds what you have to prepare to do and I heard this in reference to like leading worship yeah like try doing it in a cemetery and see mm-hmm. how, how you know because there's no response you're not going to get any kind yeah. of response yeah. so they're like try doing it like that first and seeing if you still like doing it if you still have that passion mm-hmm. you know so that you can check yourself to make sure that you're not being influenced by all those people like saying oh Oh, you did such a good job. Yeah. Your autograph. And stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. really, really good, really important to protect ourselves. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Yeah. I had some a friend used to say something like, "Because I'm, because I'm immune to the praise of men, I'm immune to the criticism of men." That's good. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. Like because the praises don't lift you up and you start to believe your own height mm-hmm, or because mm-hmm. you're in the cemetery yeah. and nobody's praising you <laughs> yeah. and you, you didn't ever build this on the praises of people, yeah. you can't be brought low or down yeah. by the yeah, criticisms so of good. people. The, for their acceptance mm. and you'll die from their rejection. Mm, that's good. Mm. That was Ace Ventura. We're very happy that you were able to join yes. us. It's great. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. cool. Thank you. And it's Thanks. because of Scott that we have this space to do this yes. podcast. So we're so grateful yes. that you allow the space for creativity sure. mm-hmm. to for us to use like yes. something like this for God right. and to like share. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. So. Okay. Well, we'll we will see you guys. <laughs> Make sure to comment and share with other people. Yes. Subscribe to us. Yes. All right. So we will see you in yes. our next episode. Come on. Humble. So we go like Humble this. Shit. Wait, you, you gotta join this. Oh, no, okay, that was good. But... He's explosion. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, do it. Humble. Humble. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah.